there, my name is Megan and welcome to my channel or welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a book review for Nemesis Games by James S.A. Corey. But before we go ahead and get on into the review, if you are not already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, as well as the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I post new content. I post new bookish videos every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday, and sometimes other days throughout the week. Also, don't forget to check down in the description box below for links to my Patreon, where I do book giveaways, as well as my Amazon shop, where I list all of the books that I talk about on my channel that I really enjoyed. Nemesis Games is the fifth book in the Expanse series by the author duo James S.A. Corey, and it is an adult sci-fi uh, series, and this book will include a little bit of spoilers because it's really hard to discuss the fifth book in a series without discussing spoilers, so please, please check the timestamps down below for spoilery sections. In Nemesis Games, we are following the crew of the Rosanante, and the Rosanante is parked for a while because it has to undergo a lot of maintenance, and it, now that it is parked, the different members of the crew, so we have Holden, Amos, Alex, and Naomi, they end up kind of all taking on um, little responsibilities of their own. So Alex decides to head back home to Mars to see his ex-wife and kind of get some closure uh, with her. And while he is on Mars, he ends up running into Bobby, who is from, I think, book one. She is the Marine who had a big part in that story. So she is reintroduced into Nemesis Games, which is good because I actually quite like her. Amos ends up returning back to Earth uh, because someone that he was really close to, he found out, passed away. And then while he is on Earth, something crazy happens. And then he ends up coming into contact with Clarissa Mao, who is in this high security prison underground. Um, she was the girl who tried to like kill everybody in, I think, Abaddon's Gate. Um, so she is actually reintroduced into the story, which is fascinating. And then we have Naomi. So I feel like the majority of the story, I don't want to say revolves around Naomi, but her story has the most impact in what's going on. So Naomi ends up heading back to Ceres Station to take care of something from her past. So at this point, remember, the ring has been opened and there are there's just like a mass exodus of people that are entering uh, the ring to search for new planets to colonize and kind of start a new life on and over. And Mars is really worried about this because Mars does not have a sustainable atmosphere for humans. So they are worried that everyone is going to flee Mars and Mars itself, not the planet, but like the government and everything will completely collapse because no one's going to be living there anymore. And then, funny enough, Mars at this time has one of the, or the strongest military fleet in the entire galaxy. So because of the havoc that's going on and just the instability, there is this new militant group that arises uh, from the OPA that calls themselves the Free Navy. And they, you know, claim that they are doing the best for Belters and, and all of these people, when in fact they are basically terrorists in disguise, and they end up wreaking havoc on Earth and doing just a lot of horrible things. And then we also find out, and here is a spoiler, so please, please, if you have not read this book, you might want to skip over the spoilery section. But what we learn is that the leader of the Free Navy was actually Naomi's old lover, and she has a son named Philip by this leader, whose name is Marco. And that, I was like, what? When I read that, when I found out that Naomi had a son, he's like a teenage son, I'm like, how was this never even mentioned? This is book five, and this is just thrown in there. And then my thoughts immediately go back to Holden, like, oh my god, how could you possibly, like, be with this man, be his lover, be his companion, and not tell him that you have a son who is now part of this terrorist organization? So I just do not like the storylines that evolve around children, like, oh, you left me, mom, so now I hate you. Now I have been completely brainwashed by my father to be this crazy person, and I'm going to go completely bomb Earth and kill everybody because I am this zealot who is listening to my father. So I just did not like Philip. I did not like the storyline. I did not like the fact that Naomi had a son that is just thrown in there in book five. And I know that this is going to play into subsequent books and it's not going to go anywhere because Philip is probably going to end up being some sort of antagonist, um, leader of the Free Navy, because that whole situation uh, with the fighting the Free Navy was definitely not resolved in this book. And I'm just not looking forward to that, honestly. And when Naomi finally tells Holden, he's just like totally cool about it. Just... <laughs> 
I don't think I would be cool with that. Like if I had been with someone for a long time now, you know, had an intimate relationship and they just come up to me and would be like, oh yeah, I have a child and he's a terrorist. I would not be as cool as Holden did. I feel like his reaction was just completely unrealistic. Just side note there, my opinion. Um, we also have a lot of play of the politics in this world. So one of the reasons that um, the Free Navy had decided to, they didn't bomb Earth. I, keep, I think I keep saying they bomb Earth. They like pelt asteroids at Earth and kill billions and billions of people. It's kind of that like apocalyptic end of world event. So like I said, Amos survives. And at the time he was visiting Clarissa in prison. So when all of this happens, they're able to escape. And Clarissa ends up coming with Amos back to the Rosinante. So you got to remember that Clarissa tried to kill Holden and tried to kill all of them and really is not mentally stable. Um, but he wants to take her on as his apprentice because if I remember correctly, she's like an electrical engineer. Um, but she also has these um, special abilities that were um, like downloaded into her or surgically implanted in her. I can't remember. So I feel like she would definitely be an asset to the Rosinante as long as they can trust her, you know, to not be violent or try and kill them. Um, but I, I didn't mind that. I thought it was an interesting dynamic that James S.A. Corey decided to add into the crew because at the time Holden was talking about how they needed to expand their crew and that there wasn't enough of them to effectively run the ship. There is also some mystery going on with some uh, ships that are going through the gates that are going missing. And this is brought to Holden's attention by Monica Stewart, who was the investigative journalist that he dealt with in one of the previous books. And this is kind of where the mystery of the gates is still portrayed in the story. So something is happening to these ships and something is attacking and taking these ships. And we don't know if it is an alien force or we do not know if it is the free Navy or if it is one of the um, current governments that has military fleets. So that is the mystery that is going to be continued into subsequent books. So now we just have more dynamics added into the political instability of this world, as well as Naomi and how she is tied to the Free Navy, who I consider killers and terrorists. And then we have this alien force that is consuming ships, colony ships, as they are going through the gates and they're trying to find a new world to live on. So there's a lot going on in Nemesis Games. And to be honest, I actually like this book pretty well. Um, I really liked seeing the different points of view from the characters because all of them were doing something different um, that contributed to the story. And then at the end of the story, everything came together to address like the main conflict, which was the Free Navy and the disappearing colony ships. So once again, I think that James S.A. Corey, you know, created a very engaging narrative to add small bits to this ever expanding story. And I ended up giving Nemesis Games a 4 out of 5 stars. Alright you guys, that is it for my review of Nemesis Games. Let me know in the comments if you read this book and what you thought of it. And I will see you all in another video soon. Goodbye!